Hello. How are we today? Hope we're doing well. Hope uh, everything is going good for you guys. Let's uh, hop into the sim and show you my beautiful 747. Uh, our tail number today is November 747 Yankee Oscar, aka 747 Yo. Um, <laughs> hey, Fionn. How am I? I'm doing good. How are you? Also, I, I would like to uh, commend the uh, ramp staff at Dar es Salaam for literally just parking the tail on top of the, uh, the sound, the noise barrier there. Um, so let's get this on the go here. Let's get standby power on, battery on. And I would like to, just for the time being, connect to GPU. Thank you very much, Alex, Crab King. Uh, so we need to load this plane up first. Let's go to fuel. Uh, menu select. Yeah, menu select. And our fuel for this journey is 24.2 tons. The reason I'm choosing fuel and payload first will become apparent. 24.2. Can I get 24.2? I get 24.5. That'll do. We'll start fueling. Our payload is. Can I select. Right. A payload is 350 passengers. <laughs> and extra cargo to bring it up to a total payload weight of 39 tons. Uh, is it 39.1? 39.1! Perfect! Let's start loading the aircraft. It's already loaded, fantastic. Um, <laughs> take off weight. Well, that's tow, actually. Um, and the sound I can manage with this little add-on here, so let's get a bit more sound on the go. Right. So we have our GPU in. We need to just get everything here starting up. Line the IRS systems. The generator's prepared. You will notice that everything is being done four times. Won't need the stab tanks. Just put on the cross feeds. Window heat on. Uh, packs can stay off for now. AP bleed will come on when I need it. Uh, yaw damper is on. Whoops. Right down to the FMC now. Big plane. Yes, four engines, which is always good. Uh, pause in it. If we go next page, we should be able to. Oh, there you go. Fantastic. Our uh, ref airport is. Uh, Hotel Tango Delta Alpha and the gate does not matter our destination is Hotel Bravo Bravo Alpha the flight number is uh, November 747 Yankee Oscar um, runway and stuff will be sorted later our flight plan is it cop. That'll look like a direct, but it won't be. Didn't you see how the plane that take off very nice, Massey? And uh, it's uh, Upper Bravo 
to Bajavora. There's Jay. And uh, believe it or not, after some of the crazy routes I've had, that's it. Next. Um, oh yeah, gotta go back. Knit ref. Root. Activate, execute. Init ref. Is there a few light? Oh, hang on. What am I doing here? Looks like, there we go. Uh, our reserves for today's flight, this flight at least, is uh, 8.2. 8.2 tons of reserves. Hmm. Uh, 82. Oh, zero 08. Uh, cost index is 25. 23.4 planned. Yeah, that's perfect. Was I doing a long haul yesterday? No, I wasn't. I was just in and out quite a lot. And our uh, cruising altitude is flight level 400. With no uh, steps. Um, this here is for the cruising winds, which is 110 slash 25. 025? Is it gonna be that much of a. No? Never mind then. Thrust limit. Um, we're gonna go max. Because I don't trust this thing. We're gonna be going flaps 20 on takeoff, that is SLP and a 747. Uh, V2 is 152, so let's set that here. 152. Trim is going to be 6.3 units. Perfect. And the runway for takeoff. Uh, Probably a good idea to put in the departure now. We're going to go off 05 via the Ativa 1 Alpha. To a early. No. No, back, back, back. Hang on. 05 via the Ativa 1 Alpha to Itgop. Execute that. Take off speed deleted. That's fine. Um, because they're pretty much identical to what they were. Um, that's slightly concerning, but we'll have to make do with that. Take off. When we wind, I will need... The Meteor. Uh, 13017. Uh, one seven. Please work. You won't work. Okay. Never mind. Um. Right. And I th think that's all the stuff down there. Now we move up here. To get the runway heading, which is on this chart here. Runway zero five zero four seven degrees. So let's put that in. And we're going to set an initial altitude of 10,000 uh, back over to this here to get a QNH 1016. That's uh, currently set 1021. 1016. Altitude being shown is 220 feet. Airport elevations 182. Hmm. Okay, that'll do though. Um, so we're gonna hold our. Let's see if I just. Oh, 
a little armed. Right. Um. And I just want to make sure. One, two, two, eight. Perfect. Two thousand. And that. Stand by. Perfect. And we're not going to need to push back because we can just drive straight out. Thank you, Massey. For the belated birthday. By the way, this is by far the biggest plane in the airport. Um, you got a couple A320s, a 737 there. Even though Frontier actually fly A320s. Okay. A CRJ there. Well, that could be an MD-88. And it looks to be a triple seven there. Um, and then the big boy here, just for some of these. How's my day been so far? Pretty good. Thank you very much. Um, at this point, we go APU on. Just get the fuel load center so I can turn these tanks off. And we just need to wait for the APU to come online, which will be illuminating these two lights here, available, APU is now online, the GPU can be closed, or disconnected, which appears to already be. Um, I I think we're about ready for engine start. Let's get APU bleed on, packs are off. And hopefully this will all work because I can't remember if there's something else I'm supposed to do here. Let's get uh, engines two and three started. Where's the glasses? I don't have the new glasses yet, SG. Um, I won't have them until sometime next week. Twenty-five percent N2. Let's get the N1 building up here. Yeah, I won't have them until next week. They're quite large glasses, too. Um, beacon should be set to both. Now should be set to on. Um, so I forgot that. What else did I forget? Seatbelt set to auto. Kevin Chime, just for funsies. And let's get engines one and four starting up now. And again, just gonna watch the N2 values here. Once they hit about 25%, then we'll uh, kick the fuel in. Engine one's good to start. Engine four is good to start. And one rising in both engines, fantastic. And I forget to turn on the ECs. Yes, I did. I always forget to turn on the electronic engine controls. Packs off, APU running. We've got four good starts. You can disable APU gen, disable the APU entirely. Get the packs running. Get pack three running. Pick spots on this are a bit weird. And uh, get the engine bleeds on. 
multiple deescalation valves. No warnings. Perfect. So with that, I want to bring up my taxi chart and bring it over here. Hello, Bailey. So let's get the parking brake. Actually, let's get flaps in for takeoff. Uh, So we're going, we're going big boy flaps, flaps 20. We're going to want auto brake RTO. We're going to want heading hold on, whoa, okay. Heading hold on, VNAV, LNAV, armed. In fact, uh, Disable LNAV. Flaps 20. Quick. I don't think we got time for a quick uh, flight control test here. Quick flight control test. Oh, yeah, center. Flight control. Oh. Now, left inboard needs to be nav. Lower center needs to be flight controls for now. So, full left, full right, full up, full down, center, rudder, left. And right, and centered. Perfect. Let's kill the parking brake. Parking brake was already killed. Kill the parking or kill the parking brake again. The engine spooled up a small bit. Brake check. Brake's good. This is not technically the Queen of the Skies DMF. The Queen of the Skies is the 400. This is her younger sister. This is the uh, 747-8. So much to traps annoyance, I am in fact playing a dash 8. It's just significantly bigger than the one he uh, he hates. Can I hardly hear the plane? Um, just boost. Right, this is as loud as she goes. Bear in mind, SG, that I'm only using taxi power currently. Outside! It sounds like this. <laughs> it's, it's quite loud outside. I'm only using taxi power right now. I don't need to be going... Uh, I don't need to be going full beans on a taxiway. You asked to hear the bird. I gave you what you wanted.
get the straw bomb. One of my turn offs. Um, as well. It's really funny to think that I usually fly these boys. And I'm in this thing that towers over. Okay, let me just turn on the engine volume a bit. I don't think there's going to be any winning here. No, my sound controls have... have um, Approaching. Three, two. Have, that's better. These sound controls are quite useless for the 747, as it turns out. We are continuing down... Uh, what taxiway is this? <laughs> taxiway Papa, by the looks of it. And, um... Believe it or not, we're going to take the full length of the runway. It might come as a shock to you to know, to know that a 747 will actually need a full runway. Um, it's 3,000 meters, so we should be good. What's our landing runway length? This is something I probably should have checked before deciding to bring a 747 out onto it. 3,600. Okay, we're fine. <laughs> we might have some Mimi landings, though, because I'll need to... If we're on something any smaller than about 3,000 meters, I'm going to need to actually completely slam the plane. Um, as early as I possibly can. Hey Steve, how am I? I'm doing good. Don't float. This thing doesn't float. This thing... I, I, this is probably the plane that I'm best at landing. It loves gliding down. Um, problem being... Why is Active Sky giving completely different winds? I mean, I have no choice but to use this wrong way, but Active Sky seems to be giving... Um, Seems to be giving a crosswind. Approaching zero five. All right, we're gonna use as much of the runway as we can, so we're gonna wipe out some landing lights here. Full use of the tiller. On runway, zero, five. There we go. Get some panel lighting on. Right. Forty percent achieved. Oh, that is a bad crosswind. We won. Rotate. Rotate. We two. That's right, Kiro. Flaps 
that's it. There's apparently an FMC message. Let's get the off in. And get the altitude all the way up. To flight level 400. Um, I don't have an FMC message here. Hmm. Oh, I forgot to turn on the landing lights. Altimeter setting. Altimeter set standard. One zero one three. And away we go. <laughs> Let us simulate. Did I turn the landing lights on? No, I forgot to. So I get written up over that in real life. There will be issues. As you can see by the ground clouds, we have Ortho back. Um, we are out on course. Fantastic. And we are going to be cruising at a rather beautiful 40,000 feet. Let's have a look at the route while we're uh, in climb here. We are seemingly going out to Neplin for the departure, which isn't part of the departure, but okay. Um, we're heading to Itgop, that's the end of the departure here. We should be at about 40,000 feet by then. Maybe a touch less. Let's just uh, kill the lights. And release the Krakens. Um... Back to our flight plan. From Itgop, we're going over to... Ah, oh, we're on the low honor. There we go. There's the high honor. Uh, from Itgop, we're going to be following Uniform Bravo 607 uh, through Itunu, Itnav, Octas, Etuxi, Epmin, Osubu, these two points here which aren't seemingly named, and Udmam. We drink to Bujumbura. There doesn't seem to be any arrivals, so we're just going to be going straight on to an approach, and we'll decide on a runway at the time. Currently, our planned runway is 17. You're showing your heart, it's not a big joke about the giant BBJ on the back. This thing, I have to admit, flies amazingly. Like, it's big and clunky and unwieldy, yeah, but it just... It's so good in the air. It, like, it's huge, and it doesn't like doing anything very fast. But once it does start doing something, it just does it. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta give it a bit of time to let it do its thing, but it'll do whatever you want it to. So down there is Dar es Salaam, we are currently 15,000 feet, still climbing at a, uh, excuse me, you what, 4,000 feet per minute in a climb. Um, probably helps to have my weather radar on, oh it really does, holy cow, there's actually uh, weather up ahead. We may get some interesting stuff happening. So according to our FMC here, or our, um, what is it, MFD, um, we are going to be crossing Itgop just uh, probably 35,000 feet. We'll be continuing on then through a bit of a storm, um, but it's going to be about two hours in a 
more or less in a perfectly straight line, quite honestly. Um, this departure is the only bit that isn't just direct. Which is kind of comical. Let's just get the uh, heading bug in agreement with where we actually want to go. Set to auto. Oh wow! That's set to auto bank, and it's still deciding we need uh, about 25, 30 degrees of bank. Okay, playing. You, you do you. Heading out now towards it gop. Uh, flying out over what appears to be some description of a rainforesty kind of thing. We joke. Was kid lonely during flies and no pilots and crew, or is it the scared to fly the other ways? My flying is usually quite good, it's the landings that it end up with issues. Still turning to get back on course here, by the way. Um, and I am slightly concerned by this cell on the weather radar. Um, I know we're in a 747, we're going to be up pretty high, but explaining weather tends to be a bit silly and throws things at me that it maybe shouldn't. Um, we're going to fly straight through it in the hopes that it's going to be fine. Um, by the way, UTC time, you'll see that it's actually 12.51 uh, Irish slash British time in-game currently. Um, the reason that I faff with UTC and make it quite early is because in real life, if I bring this up, um, it is actually night time here in real life. So it's much easier for me to make it daytime. Uh, we are down here, by the way, under HTDC. Now we're flying to HBVA. Um, yeah, much easier for me to to, fa to um, faff it into daytime than to fly all of these legs at night. Um, once we get he heading a bit further north towards Europe, we'll have more daytime flights. And... Uh, there's going to be a period where we're just flying fake time constantly. Once we're in the States, we can fly real time all we like. Um, even like towards the east end of the eastern end of Russia, we can just go ham with it. Um, cruising at Mach 0.8, currently at 25,000 feet. Okay, okay, plane, you're just going a bit mental. We're at Mach 0.8, ground speed of 502 knots with a 20 knot uh, kind of a tailwind. So I think we're going well. I'm not seeing that weather system that is on the radar, which is in theory good news. In practice it might not be. Um, but we shouldn't have any major concerns. The only concerns I have really, quite honestly, are landing. Um, our block time today, block time from block to block, so from starting to move to the point at which we stop is approximately 2 hours 10 minutes uh, in flight time um, is actually estimated to be 1 hour 41 I've put 2 hours 10 into the flight plan though uh, just to allow for some sort of hold up somewhere um, and what I want to do is actually just grab the second book and get the flight plan for that up here uh, briefing, please. So our second leg is... Oh. We're going to be doing potentially three legs today. Just looking at the second uh, flight plan, because we've got a block time of 30 minutes. And a cruising altitude in the second leg of uh, 190. So we'll probably be... Uh, be doing a triple triple leg today. I wasn't expecting that leg to be so short, so I need to... Uh, 
I'll show you how I plan these flights. Well, we're uh, pretty much a cruise now. So our final leg that I've planned is the one here from Burundi to Rwanda. So we'll be going from Kigali to Entebbe. That's fine. I go over here to fly now. So if I go to Kigali, it'll bring it up very nicely. So I look for the airport names and Hebe will bring that up nicely. Um, this flight in real life takes about an hour in a A330. KLM and Brussels Airlines are a bit drunk it seems. And Turkish. Qatar are even more drunk with a 787. Um, Turk okay, Turkish here makes some sense with a 737. As well as Rwandair. Uh, I think Rwanda are the least drunk with the Dash 8. Anyway, intro booking will select. Yes, look at all the planes that I have in my little garage here. Number 747 Yankee Oscar. Number 747 Yankee Oscar. Uh, Charter IFR, book and dispatch. Simbrief Auto. That's going to take a minute for Simbrief to come through here. You'll see the full length of book flights that I have booked up. There we go. I've just realized that it's a stupid thing. I did a really stupid thing. How big is the difference between X plane and FSX? Um, night and day, honestly. Absolutely night and day. I, like I think most people, I think it's fair to say most people are like this. I started off with FSX um, a few years ago. And. Uh, the business of the stream was an X-Plane but not an FSX. The reason is... Um, the, oh, Mikael, the reason that everybody... You'll notice is P3D streams uh, under FSX on Twitch as well. Um, the reason's very simple. The flight sim community have kind of just agreed, and Twitch is fine with this. Um, that all flight sims, uh, commercial flight sims, so P3D, X-Plane, I presume Aero Flight Code as well, um, Flight Sim 2020, they just all get thrown under FSX because that's the most famous, that's the one people know. And, um, yeah, the difference between X-Plane and FSX, number one, the flight model is massively different. Um, like that's something, I suppose that's not the most noticeable thing. The most noticeable thing is the graphics are far, 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 far superior. Like this is a pay we're playing, granted. And uh, this is, you know, orthographic scenery. This is literally satellite imagery. Um, you've been playing FSX a lot recently. And you actually, oh, don't get me wrong. I love FSX. Absolutely love it. It's worthy of its place as that noise yeah it's a bit loud um it's worthy of its place as like the granddaddy of all the current sims during frankfurt comes over with fra for france instead of gdr for germany let me just bring up flight radar 24 7 have a look at this i think i know what's going on and why you're confused dmf um, I'll keep talking to Mikkel here real quick while I do this. Um, FSX deserves its place as like the the granddaddy of all the current sims. Yeah, DMF. I can tell you. I can tell you right now what's gone wrong here. What you're seeing. So it does say FRA beside a German flag. You're completely correct in saying that it's saying. FRA for France, except it's not. It's saying FRA for Frankfurt. So that planes. This is what real life looks like. Um, that's why it's FRA slash EDDF. If I bring up uh, Cologne here, it's C uh, Charlie Golf November slash Echo Delta Delta Kilo. 
or uh, if we bring up Shipal. It's Alpha Mike Sierra for Amsterdam. Whoops. Um, and then Echo Hotel Alpha Mike. It, it The FRA in Frankfurt it literally stands for Frankfurt. It doesn't stand for France. It, it's not some weird mistake that they've made. Um, every letter, every airport in the world of bringing up uh, Nottinghamit's November Quebec Tango, Birmingham's uh, Bravo Hotel X Ray, Coventry is uh, Charlie Victor Tango, etc., etc., etc. Um, let's get that back up. You just want an Airbus A380. Problem there is, Michael. Uh, I'll put this pretty bluntly. Every single payware A380 so far has been shit. None of them work. <laughs> um, <coughs> none of the, no A380 that's come out works. Um, which is a shame, but it's something that has to be dealt with. Um, just blank that. Fantastic. You bought quite a lot of planes in FSX. If you have a lot of FSX payware, Michael, um, what you might want to look at is Prepare 3D by Lockheed Martin. Um, that's based off of the... FSX engine, um, but Lockheed made a lot of changes to it. Technically, it's not to be used for entertainment according to their terms of service, but that's meme, so uh, get like a, an educational license for it and you're sweet. They either didn't reverse. Um, you're not supposed to use reverse thrust to back a plane up. You're supposed to get a pushback. Um, now you just gave up. Yeah, I, I, I can, I can get behind that logic, I guess. Um, you're not, you're not supposed to try and reverse thrust planes. I do occasionally when I'm doing something stupid, but um, planes aren't made to reverse thrust. They're not made to power back. Pushback takes hours and doesn't turn. Um, see, that's where you suppose that's where payware comes in again, Michael. You're, uh, oh, buggeration! What's the name of that payware? There's a payware you can get. Um, that's like ground handling, and that has really good pushback. Um, in X-Plane it's actually even easier, there's a plugin called Better Pushback, and it just works... Huh. It works absolutely perfectly. Like, I, if I'm on the ground I can pre-plan pushback to exactly where I want, start the pushback and it'll give me all the audio cues and whatnot. What's the name of that payware? Ground Services X, GSX, is um, a payware for... FSX and P3D that um, does like uh, all the ground handling. Now you just wait until you get XP X plane. Um, it's usually, and this is a top tip if you want to get it on Steam, it's usually on sale during the Steam sales. They usually knock like 30% off. So we got what, the Christmas sale is the next one or the autumn sale in a couple of months. Um, I'd advise like. If you can afford it then, to get it. Um, and there's tons of great freeware for X-Plane, like... I'm in a payware plane right now, it's... Okay, it's not the greatest. Um, the new Microsoft Flight Sim is the one that I'm interested in currently. And sideways, hello. New... Uh, yeah, FS2020. That looks super interesting. Um, it... Looks like it might. Well, from what I've heard, I haven't seen this anywhere. But there was a dev blog that was like, it's got hyper realistic physics and 
um, satellite based terrain imagery which is what I'm using in X-Plane right now but mine is basically raw satellite data which is horrifically not efficient for sound for, for file size I've got about 400 gigs of ortho currently installed you know what's about landing Denmark the longest flight you've ever taken? how long was it Mikko? or how long is it? Because my longest end-to-end um, -end flight was... It was supposed to be 10 hours, but it ended up being closer to 12 because I fell asleep. Um, uh, London Heathrow to Cape Town. Um, second longest is 10 hours. Between 6 and 8 hours. Oh, bit of a long haul. What are you flying? to get that kind of flight time. I'm presuming it's like a 747 or something. <coughs> presuming you're you're in uh, a 74 because the 73 kind of craps out after about four and a half, five hours. 737? What? Have you been mid-air refueling a 737? I don't think it has the range for that unless it's empty. But you probably made it empty actually now that I think about it. <laughs> Seven three usually craps out between like four and five hours. You had to land like three hours ago. That makes more sense. <laughs> That makes a lot more sense, you had to land through. I did um, once, and I'm, I'm planning on doing it again soon in a different plane. Uh, the North Atlantic crossing uh, in X plane in a Cessna 172. Which, if you know the Cessna 172, you'll know it's quite slow. Um, and it also doesn't have the fuel range to go fully transatlantic. Nor would I want it to because each leg from, uh, I think I took off of Goose Bay, landed in Nersarswak, landed in Reykjavik, then landed in Prestwick. Each leg was about seven or eight hours. The point of the past, the software changes to them three bits and max in their sims. Yes, but they're looking for type-rated pilots sideways. I'd love to help Boeing out, but I'm not type rated, nor do I have a pilot's nor do I have a pilot's license. I don't even have a driver's license. <laughs> I'd love to help, but I can't. Also I'm nowhere near good enough on a 7.3. Um What's the range I currently got? 160 miles. If I bring it up to 640, yeah. There is our airport, I believe. Welcome back, Alex. You end up from Riyadh. It's a pretty cool pl I've never flown to Riyadh yet. Riyadh is in a little while on this tour. When's Riyadh? Oh, not actually too far. If I'm going as far as Uganda today. Um, and I could go as far as Kenya, in theory. Then, like Somalia, Sudan, Ethiopia, or South Sudan even, Ethiopia, Northern Somalia, or Somaliland, Djibouti, Ethiopia, Sudu, Sudan, and that's Eritrea. Uh, Egypt, Israel, Jordan, and then, yeah, I'll be in the Riyadh fairly soon actually. This map is looking a lot more green than it used to. Um, this is intended to be like. Because um, I'm very sure you're not around here much, Mikkel. This is something that I'm doing on Sundays. Uh, it's a world tour in mainly GA planes, but sometimes I... I say sometimes. Lately I've been uh, whipping out a lot of jets. Um, is it anti-Egypt? 1600 kilometers. Which is... I want to say it's something similar to this leg. Yeah, it's only slight. It's probably this leg plus the next leg. 
It's basically the distance we'll be covering today if we make it as far as Uganda. I tried going from Washington to LA but gave up, took too long. Yeah. The trick that I usually use is just whack on autopilot and hope for the best. Um, so you're now approaching the Atuna Itnov pairing, that's perfect. And we are the only plane within several hundred miles. You didn't realize how big USA was. Yeah, USA is massive. Like, there's a reason they tend to use, um, triple sevens and seven eight sevens and all sorts of long haul planes to do just cross country trips. In Ireland, we use ATR seventy twos to do that. Um, but in the US, it needs it needs to be a long haul plane. Um, similarly, in Russia, it needs to be something that can do long haul, and probably also actually China and Australia. Uh, in fact, the uh, the route between Australia and New Zealand is kind of ideally done in a long haul plane, so I might end up using the 747 for that. Um, spoiler alert, that's going to be several hours. Uh, it's going to be a few hours for that leg. Um, but it, it's just a case of... Uh, Looking at your leg length, like this flight in total is 637 nautical miles. Very, very, very achievable on a 737. Probably ideally done on a 737. Um, and you could probably get away with doing it in something like a Dash 8 or an ATR if you really wanted to. Um, in fact, I'd actually guess an E190 or an E175 would be better. Practicing your landings and takeoffs, or you usually do. So you go from Copenhagen to Alborg, or who's so easy flying in Denmark? <laughs> why not just do circuits, Michael? Why not, um, like take off, go out for 30 seconds or so, pull a 180, fly along 30 seconds from the landing end of the runway. Yeah, past the landing end of the runway, fly along 30 seconds, pull another 180, and just bring it down and do that a few times. Touch and goes. I do have the flaps up, don't I? I do. <laughs> you usually miss the circuits. Well, then you need to learn how to do circuits. It's an additional reason to do circuits. the contrails. You literally can't line up with the wrong ways than yours that. Um, there's a trick if you're flying like a Boeing. What you can do is, um... Oh, the fix button doesn't want to work. Let's bring up the progress page. Um, you can bring up a fix and just set a radio to the airport that is like the runway heading and then line up with that. Hey Tractor Games, you're now responsible for tracking the delays on your mate's plane. What's this flight? I think I've got flight radar up still. I don't. What's this flight, uh, Alex? You'd love to know how I remember all the stuff to fly the plane. Um, it's actually sideways, like, really easy. Vienna, Manchester, EasyJet. Ooh. So, l remembering the steps to fly these planes is very easy. Like, step one is get the battery on, so you actually have power. Step two in the jet is make sure the APU is connected, the auxiliary power unit from outside. Make sure you got the external power running. Um, then you just configure the bus ties and generators and the um, hydraulic systems then you work on fuel you gotta get the IRS aligning fairly early on 
for navigation. Um, and then you go down, you put in your flight plan, you get everything sorted there. By the time you have flight plan in and all your takeoff configs set up, you're usually ready to get the APU running. Um, so you can get the engine started soon. Get the APU running, get the APU lead on, get the uh, external power off. And then uh, cough push and whatnot. That's fine. Looks hard when you get into it, it's really easy. Yeah, it, it, it's it's um, deceptively simple because every plane at its heart uses the same systems. Um, like Airbus, Airbus and Boeing, people say that, oh, it's so difficult going from Airbus to Boeing and Boeing to Airbus. In reality, you just need to know what words are different. Um, like I've been for the last few days flying an A319 in sim, and I'm so I'm back to a 747 pretty easily. Um, in fact, the hardest thing sideways about learning X-Plane is learning the damn default FMC, which this is. This isn't the default. No, this is a custom FMC. The default FMC is terrible. The steering thing, it's even easier. Yeah, with a whole house set up like mine, where I actually have um, rudder controls on the throttle quadrant, it just makes life a lot easier. Which is why you'll sometimes see me talking when I'm taxiing and waving this hand about, but this hand is, for some reason, just stuck down and sometimes going forwards and backwards. That's just me modulate, just me taking care of the thrust um, and making sure everything's fine. Um, but we are still approximately 1257 Zulu. Oh wow, we're approximately 40 minutes out already, 4-0 minutes. So we're going to have a top of drop fairly soon, yeah. In about uh, 200 nautical miles? I want to make it? No. 220 or so nautical miles? 240 nautical miles even. Yeah, what am I talking about? Um, and our top of drop, let's start planning uh, arrival here. So we're going to uh, Hotel Bravo Bravo Alpha. Okay. Check specific website or you sold them together for six hundred. Get um. Yeah, crap. Can you can set it up so the rotors also to her. Mikkel, if you're looking for something that has decent rotor controls, get the uh, Thrustmaster T Flight Hotas. That's what I have. It's relatively cheap but like you get quality for money you get, you get pretty good quality uh 18021016 so we've been landing ILS17 um ILS17 and they're coming in from the south, so I want a southern transition. Can I get one from Kibor? No. Um, let's go from Romeo Golf. Which is a bit out of the way, but it makes more sense. Let's go from uh, Ruagura. So it's when you golf, transition, enter that. It's so now going to update top of descent. To be just before Udmamo. That's perfect. And we'll configure V speeds, or ref speeds at the end. Um. The what? Um, my flight setup is a Thrustmaster T-Flight HOTAS X, which is, um, I think approximately like 50 to $100. Um, it's not super expensive, but it's it's pretty high quality. Um, I personally love rudder pedals myself, but I just can't justify the expense. Um, plus I've got like a steering wheel and a ton of crap under my desk, so... Not exactly got the space to have a rudder pedal setup. 
Logic Extreme 3D Pro. I mean, the, the Extreme 3D isn't a bad stick sideways. It's just that something like a Hotas just makes life a small bit easier. Um, especially something like the T Flight, because it just it just works. Sorry, Todd Howard, I'm stealing your line. It just works. <laughs> Ooh, that's some interesting terrain over there. Oh, wow. That is definitely interesting terrain. Kind of annoyed that there's so many clouds, but... At least there's something to look at on the You're landing in 13 minutes. I'll be at top of descent in. Uh, I'm gonna guess approximately 20. Yeah, n new landing time is an hour four minutes from now. That makes a bit more sense. Um, it's an hour four minutes. So about half an hour from now, we'll be landing. Or we'll be top drop. Um, so while we're doing that, let's have a look at the approach chart here. Oh, an overlay. Um, oh dear. <laughs> this is quite mount. This is more mountainous than I'd expected. Um. Oh, I wanted to go see Kilimanjaro today. Oh, no, go see Kilimanjaro another day. Circle land not authorized east. Our... Plus delta, so 295 is our minimums. So we'll set decision height as 300. Um, landing altitude looks to be about 2800. Uh, transition altitude is. Transition to flight level. Oh, this is one of the airports that has a set transition. Fantastic. Uh, init ref index approach index. Hang on. Options. Hide the oaks, please. Um, performance. First limit, approach... Hmm. No. Let's not do that. Menu... Okay, um... Ah, here we go. Cruise, and then we'll go... Econ 3... Uh, speed transition... Hmm... Recommending 392... Got the in descent altitude already at 6600. That's actually all fine. I 
max speed Mach 189. I'm not gonna. We're going Mach 185 already, so I don't think 0.89 is gonna do much difference. Um, and the X-plane clouds seem to be behaving themselves like actual clouds today. They're not at 40,000 feet like they sometimes are. This is, I think, the nearest airport. These don't look much like airfields. Wait. Was that a second plane that I saw? It shouldn't have been. That's a visual glitch over there, I think. There shouldn't be a plane over there. Interesting. Did I pay for these sounds on 747? Um, technically yes, but like, they're just the sounds that came with the, the aircraft. So, no, at the same time. <laughs> yes, yes, but no. Um, this is a pair of aircraft, these are the sounds that came with it, so technically yes, but like, specifically no. Um, I wonder if mod... This is GF mod. Um, I'm glad I'm not the only person that, that's calling the engines on these a nightmare. Oh! This uses dream engine sounds. Hello. back up, get you back up to there, and this is going to be loud for a second. I forgot that with Dream Engine I can uh, manually twiddle the sounds. It's a bit of a nose-up attitude for the plane to have, isn't it? Oh well, yeah, we're like five degrees nose up. Do I have flaps in still? No. Okay. You do you, plane. You do you. Put the exterior sound or the interior sounds up a bit more. Actually, if I turn them down a bit, then I can go. Sound engine master high. There we go. Fixed everything for now, at least. Um, I need that. Let's see what's um, what's going on free today. Got a Turkish Navy Poseidon. Uh, 
Norwegian airfield. We only need to update. I am interested in the MD-82. What are you? Engineers lost me five foot aft. Correct location. Ooh! Fought CG 12 inches forward, 12 inches up. Oh, nice. Some dudes modded the crap out of the default MD-80. Perfect. So, let's get the flight plan back up here and zoom out. Zoom that too far. Um, so, just through Epman, heading up towards Usugu. And... Our top of descent is over at Udmam. Yes, just before Udmam. So, while well, we're flying in a perfectly straight line, that's why I've chosen the um, the weird arrival that brings us off on a a funky tangent. It's just just because it's a bit more interesting, honestly. Um, ooh, if I get rid of, um, I should have done this anyway, yeah, if I go direct only of golf, but get rid of Bujumbura, oh no, I can't do it that way, I gotta do it this way, I gotta do it the, the Boeing way, can't do it the way that makes sense. So if I reflect that change in here by deleting this point, then that makes a lot more sense. It's probably changed the top of descent. It hasn't. Fantastic. How's the FSX looks? Never use default ATC. Never, never use default ATC, Mikkel. Um. I'd normally say, like, use VATSIM or something, but honestly, if you just factor yourself around, you'll probably end up doing better. Uh, especially if you've got something like Navigraph, if you've got a Navigraph subscription. Um, it gives you all the charts you need. It is the single most useful thing you can get in flight sims, honestly. Like, screw it in a payware aircraft, screw all these fancy payers, get Navigraph. Because you'll have, um, number one, correct modern... Uh, waypoint data. Uh, but number two, you'll have the actual procedures. <laughs> and you can change them on the fly like I just did there to get rid of the Bujumbura uh, VOR. And uh, do a quick reroute out of the, uh, out to the uh, Roegura um, NDB. Because it makes much more sense to go from Udmam to uh, Roegura than Udmam to Bujumbura and then out to Roegura. Um, this just makes more sense. So let's get the uh, chart overlaid again. I'm gonna want 1110 1. 1110 1. Good English. Now, radio 1101, 175. Perfect. Um, and then on fix, if it'll let me. It won't let me choose fix. Nah! Right. Uh, in it, ref. We're gonna land flaps through. We're gonna land flaps full because I don't trust this thing. Thirty-one four five. We'll actually go uh, thirty um, one fifty. It's a V ref. 
Um, and our gross weight on landing is going to be... Fuel burn. Kill altitude, landing altitude. That has DRS. Oh, doors! Why couldn't you just put doors on? That's gears. Maybe info. No, the info page doesn't work either. Um, flight controls? No, that's not good. Why are flight controls give me that? Uh, let's just blank it. That'll be good. Oh, it's PFD, not MFD. MFD is uh, this one over here. Um, and we're gonna want auto break. Let's go auto break three for landing here. And we'll arm the speed break. I know we're out. We're still quite a while out. You know, top of the scent isn't um, even on this yet. Uh, in fact, it should come up here maybe. No. Oh wait, there's the fixed page. What? No. Just give, just give me progress. Um. So we're the only people in the entirety of uh, wherever that is. We are. Tanzania. I think we're still over Tanzania. Brake pressure's on the low side. Where are you seeing brake pressure? Actually, now's a good time to make sure I'm actually squawking Charlie. Aha, I'm not! Yeah, there's no readout of brake pressure here. Dial to the left of the FMC. Brake pressure is perfect. It it should actually be about three uh, three thousand psi. Every single flight I've done, I've had 3,000 psi of brake pressure. <laughs> Thank you, DMF. So let's get, uh, let's get our descent planned in here. So we're going down, all the way down. Keep going down, going way, way down, 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 deeper and down, down to the depths of hell, there we go. Uh, down to 6600, because of course it's a weird number. Get that thing. No, I didn't! <laughs> I, I'm really not sure if you're being serious, Sim, or if you legitimately forgot. You, legit, you legitimately forgot, didn't you? I was talking about it for like a month. I wasn't bringing it up like every five minutes. 
But I've been talking about it quite a lot, Sim. You've, been, you've just been too busy in Skyrim and Medieval Engineers to, to notice. So we're within 160 miles off top of set now. Uh, we're 84 miles out, which is perfect. About to hit Edlick. A descent should auto arm. You're the NTS anymore. I know this. It's because you're rude and mean. But I've been talking about it in streams too, Sim. I've, I've not been keeping it a secret. That said, um, there were people on my Discord yesterday that were convinced that I was somehow trolling them by saying it was my birthday. Um, which shows just how much trust my Discord has in me. Um, Top of the ascent is estimated 12.51 Zulu or 12.40, so 11 minutes until top of drop. Oh yeah, everything plugged in, ready to go. To just tilt the nose down and get dropping out of the sky. Sim, when's that thing you're going to be doing um, starting? I saw that it happened, Sim. I was shocked. <laughs> I was shocked that number one, that you did it, and number two, you actually bothered logging into Discord. It, mu it must have given you a proper headache to do that. I mean, you, you actually had to remember your password. Use the browser version. You still had to log in. Like that's the main thing. You still had to log in. Just looking at the time, and I'm thinking um, that actually just doing the two legs is going to be better for me time-wise today. Um, so I'll keep the third leg as planned. Uh, but the two legs will be just better for me uh, time-wise because we're gonna be having an early uh, an early dinner as my sister's working at eight. Uh, it's also the reason that I'm moving the tour to uh, Sundays because um, I've realised these are the quietest streams that I do, and I can kind of get away with a lot more talking during these. <laughs> Because I, I, there's no point in shouting and screaming about flight sims. You know, I'm, I'm not Captain Canada. I don't want to be that chill guy. Do not see the plane of the stream. Did not see the streamer on the back of the plane? But considering he's several, several hundred miles from me, he probably didn't. Closing in on top of the scent now. We're approximately 60 miles out. You know, we're dropping out of the sky like a stone. A very heavy stone, but a stone. Uh, true air temp is... That's not right. That's, yeah, that's not right. Is it, no, that... How are the temperatures off by 30 degrees? Have I done something stupid here in the... 
index or something, because it's minus 56 outside according to my flight plan. Not minus 25. Right, we have 40 track miles to go, about, uh, actually about 50 track miles to go, still top of the descent. Clean landing, very nice. Still not enough. You say that, Sim, but I didn't explode half the base in Medieval Engineers the other night when we were playing it. In fact, I wasn't even in the game when the base exploded. <laughs> I left and you two blew up the base. Using only a wooden cart, might I add. For the benefit of chat. Right, I want a terrain readout on the second FMS, or the second um, BFD. Uh, with matching, uh, 40 miles range. Landy did me losing count. Whose cart was it, Sim, that he he caused to blow up the base? Because I don't remember him making a cart at any point. So then what the hell is going on? What's going on with the ores, though? <laughs> yep, that makes sense. Five different colors of land. Oh dear. Oh, I see what's going on. There's a tile here that's got really ancient satellite photos. So the colors are horrifically off. Well, there's the ghost plane again. I'm not entirely sure what that is. What has Landy been sending on the Facebooks? My phone, it has uh, been the vibrates. Simulate! Myself and Landy might be, uh, how do you say, what time is it? 4 4 15 pm. Uh, 
We will be watching something possibly during Raw. Something that I find far more interesting than Raw because it's space and rockets and potential rods. Seems like SpaceX are uh, flying the trash can for the final time tomorrow. Right, here's Top of Descent. We'll watch, we'll watch it come up at... We'll watch it come up on the plane at actual speed here. It's gonna zip in and down this line. Or we've passed it already and we're not descending. Why are we not descending? Because we're still four miles off. There we go, now we're on... Econ Descent. Right. Whoops. Too many speed brakes. Yes, I know the speed brakes are extended. That's intentional. Thank you for the master caution, but it is intentional. Alright, we're on our way down now. I'm hoping that's not it. No, the airport's uh, still a bit off in the distance. We will be kind of flying around it for a bit, but uh, still a reasonable distance out. Okay, do I need the speed brakes still armed? I'm just going to leave it glide and see what happens. By the way, I should mention, this is actually like a design, a paint, or paint job for a Boeing business jet. Um, I'm going to go onto their website and see what actual 747 they're using for... <laughs> Do you know what? This is actually correct. As stupid as it sounds, this is 100% true to life. Um, because in real life, Boeing used the 747-8 as a business jet. They sell 747-8 business jets. I mean, they also have the 737 MAX business jet range. Um, and 787s and 777Xs. There's the turn. How are we doing for speed? 295-ish are fine for speed. Just gonna be a case of uh, getting this bird down onto the ground. Right. We'll track down to 40 miles to match up with this. Terrain radar. We're gonna have a bit of terrain as we come in. Speed break 3, auto brake. Or speed brake armed auto brake 3 should be fine. Um, we're still a while off actually doing anything about uh, 
Oh, it does. Oh, that's really dumb. That's not how that works at all. For still a while, I've actually need to bring out flaps um, for extra lift. ETA is currently somewhere between 13.12 and 13.15 Zulu or 12.54 Zulu currently. So about uh, 20 minutes time we'll be on the ground. Spooled there, but they did. Got my throttle back to idle as well. Coming down a good descent path because we actually need to throw the, the plan is designed to actually throw in some throttle as well. Estimating now 13, 14, 1256 current, which is fine. So, where we are currently, we're heading up um, actually past the airport in a moment. So, the airport's over here, we're over. Hey. Airport's here, we're over here, we're coming in at a weird angle to hop onto this. This line here from uh, Ruegura onto the 21 mile arc, um, which I could, I guess. Yeah. Let's go direct to the arc and hope that's. Yeah, we're gonna head direct to the uh, 21 mile DME arc, which means we'll need to descend a bit faster, but we'll also get to the airport just that bit faster uh, by approximately two minutes. Control trains. I can't remember which planes you get for free, quite honestly. Um, you get a 737, a 747, an MD 80. Uh, Cessna 172 because that's just the generic plane at this point. Cirrus SF 50, Cirrus Jet, um, a Beach Baron 58, Beach King Air 90, uh, and probably other couple, but it doesn't segregate the free planes from the payware planes. Are oh, you you're a fan of the big boys? I love. I absolutely love small planes. Like, I love flying... I'm not a big fan of these heavy haulers. Like, the 747 and the A380 are the only two that I actually like. Not a big fan of the 78. Not a big fan of the 777. Not a big fan of the 76. 75 is okay, but I'm not a big fan of the, the heavies. I am much more fond of the likes of the 737, the A319. Um... They're a bit easier to fly, and you can get more flying time in for less hassle. Um, or more landings in for less hassle, I should say. For less flying time. Um, come down through 22,000 feet now. Transition level is 110. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw on the outboard landing lights now. Get the stab tanks on and the center tanks on. 
or not because you don't have any fuel in the sub tanks. You don't have to hit the steering thing in the plane just a seven barrel. Yeah, you do have to be a bit careful with the yokes. Um, especially in FSX where they do tend to go a bit mental. But, uh... Well... And explain they don't try to barrel roll in yet all that much. Right, we're gonna want 1016 in our QNH coming through on 10. Um, and I'm gonna say we're actually cleared to 6600 altitude now, so we'll put in 1016 now. Um, if we had ATC, we would probably be clearing down. Uh, below 110 at this point. Um, I'm going to take over speed control and bring us down to 250 knots. So we're going to idle the engines out and just get the speed coming down. Mikko, have a look at uh, the Antonov AN-225. If you're amazed by the 747 and the A380, have a look at the plane that dwarfs them. 747 and A380 only have four engines each. The Antonov has three engines on each wing. The alien looking one? It's probably the Antonov. Speed brakes out, flight detent just to slow us down. Put the upboard lights on, let's get the runway uh, turn offs on. Coming in pretty well. The Boeing, but with a normal looking plane cockpit, it looks so stupid. That plane doesn't sound like it exists. 747 with like a normal cockpit. Oh, wait. Do you mean the old car trans? The car transporter? Because we used to be in the... Why are you doing this? Now, after 009, go to 001. That's what you're doing, but why are you going out in a weird... Why are you doing this? Oh, the Beluga. I love the Beluga. What's wrong with the Beluga? It looks like a happy whale. So we're going to put in our runway heading now. And runway heading is 175 by the looks of it. I'm going to verify by chat taxi charts. 175. We cannot land 2002. Ah, uh, so 175, we'll just throw that in. Here, like that. Yeah. One sec. Thank you.
I'm not sure what the plane's trying to do here. Shouldn't be in a hold. Well, the Beluga isn't the carrier plane, or in the passenger plane. That's, I think, where you're getting it wrong, Miko. The Beluga is entirely used for cargo. Um, in fact, it's used to transport bits of, like, A320s and A380s, and, um, it, it's used to transport bits of Airbuses around. Um, it's Airbus's private transport to get their plane parts around, uh, around Europe. The, the Beluga is entirely used for transporting plane parts. Why is the 747... Am I going to have to take manual control over this? That makes sense. Yeah. It's because Airbus is decentralized. Like, they got a plant in the UK that makes, I think, wings. Um, they've got a couple of plants in Germany. Everything gets transported to France for assembly. It looks dumb, but if you look at it like a cargo transport, the tiny cockpit means they've got tons of room for cargo. And when they're transporting literally A380 wings in one piece, it makes sense. What, what are we doing here? No, just... Go. Just... Just go direct to... Just go direct to there. I'd correct you, but the way Airbus works, I wouldn't be too surprised that they are working on a 316. Lands near Chester at the plane plant. Yeah. Oh wow, we got quite a lot of ground clouds going on. It still looks usable. It's brilliant for what they, they use it for. Let's uh, reduce speed to max clean. Uh, if the plane continues on this dumb as hell turn, I am taking manual control and doing my damnedest to get it to actually work. You went A318. Don't make me take my new control of you now. Okay, that's it. Level out completely because you're on track. Why are you still turning plane? Level out completely. See, now you've got to correct to the right because you did a stupid thing. No one on board wants that. I wouldn't be too surprised. Um, so we can slow to 200 now. And flaps one. Flaps five. Um, 
arm the... Where's the localizer? Button? Arm the localizer. Bloody heck! Flaps 10. Localizer established, approach mode engaged. Uh, the A380 is being is um, being removed from production. Uh, it's not viable as an aircraft. Just want to check my landing speeds again. Uh, 150. That's fine. Clear to land, virtually of course. Bring it down to about sixty. Honey. Well, flaps twenty for now. Light slope intercept. Three pilots, or three autopilots on. And there's the airport. So I'm gonna do instead of doing two flights, I'm just gonna do this one because I have my dinner set behind me, and I'm not feeling like uh, eating on stream today. So this is going to be the only flight today, and we'll grab something small for tomorrow, so that we, or for next week. Um, so we have something that actually makes sense as a plane. Hang on a second, this runway heading's off. It should be 175. The chart is saying to me, the runway heading is 175. This runway is wrong. Flaps 25, and gear down. Speed brake armed, auto brake armed. Gear down. No green. Gear down, three green. Flaps 30, bring it down to VRF. Radar altimeter's in now. This is a very steep approach. We are not visual at the runway, we might have to auto land this. This could get interesting. I do a lot of stupid stuff, but I'm not going to try and land a 747 in zero viz. Um, 
you 3,000. There's the runway lights. We're not fully visual, but we have the runway inside. Roll out and flare armed. Feet stabilized, Mr. Post Jaltitude set. Command your control. Approaching one seven. This runway is not as long as it lo as I thought it was. Flaps are full, everything's set. Just want to trim those up a small bit. Perfect. Three minimums, we're continuing. And I've just realized that our speed is hellishly low. 30, 20, 10, not a great landing, it'll do, perhaps if I don't engage takeoff power <laughs> after Pulling the reverses in. If you're using full satellite data in FS2020, you should be able to. Um, right, I'll need the taxi chart back up to make sure that we're going to the right place here. Um, yep. Landing lights coming off. Taxi light on, runway turn offs can come off. And now I gotta try and find a spot to park this thing. This is the real conundrum, is trying to park. I can't, hang on a second. I can't taxi through there. There's a parking spot up here, very end. Let's get engines uh, two and three off. APUs available. Let's get the flaps going up. And uh, we'll speed brakes back.
We're gonna park in beside this very, very last uh, United 737. Park and brake on. Flaps are up, APU bleed, engines are on. Engine four off, engine one off. And let's get all the lights off. Is the transponder to stand by. And uh, that's a bit of fun. Let's get the doors open. There's the cabin doors open, all three of them. The cargo doors on this side are opening up as well. Service doors front and back are open. So if you wonder where the cargo goes on a 747, it goes into the back here and up the front there. The front cargo area is much bigger. Uh, passengers go in this side. And all the services go in this side. There we go, complete with windscreen wipers that only work on the inside. Fantastic! But that is going to do it, uh, full drop, you're coming in at a terrible time. That's going to do it for today guys. I am going to run and have my dinner. Um, I'll be back tomorrow with some farm sim, hopefully. Until then, stay safe, and goodbye.